Hi, this is Lou, welcome to my channel, and today I've got a few new things to experiment with. Mostly I'm going to be using these acrylic inks. So these are uh, Dala Rowney um, FW acrylic inks, and I've got a little selection of um, neutrals and kind of and a gold. So neutrals and gold, that's what I'm going for. So I've got white, I've got cool grey, that's the gold. This is Payne's Grey. This one is sepia. And this one is black. So what I want to do is, um, I've, I've been playing with these a little bit and I quite like that they work similarly to watercolours, but they're slightly different too. So I'm just going to have a play with them and see what I, you know, what I can do with them and what the similarities and differences are. I'm going to do some washes, cover some areas, see how they spread and blend and all of those things. But I'm going to do some mark making and I've also got a dip pen as well and I'm going to do some line work with them. I've got a block of watercolour paper here and I have... I picked this up at the art shop because... Um, yeah because I thought, oh, skinny masking tape, that's really useful. I don't really need all these colours, um, but um, it comes in, yeah, so you get quite a bit, and it's uh, six millimetres wide. So I should be able to divide my page up into smaller areas and then do little experiments on different parts of the page. So I'm going to have a play with that too. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put down a wash of water all over everything and then drop some uh, of the acrylic ink into it and see what it does. And then I'll wait for all that to dry and then I'll work into it again. It will also give me an idea of how well this masking tape stands up to ink. Does it go underneath? Does it peel up? How sticky is it? I'll be able to find out. I don't know why, how I manage it, but every single time I do this, I get hairs in it. I think it's because it's winter. That's definitely a green hair from my green jumper that I was wearing yesterday. But why is it on my table today? I don't know. Right, I think that's all the water spread and about as much fluff as I can get off it. Let's just start dropping in some inks. I'm going to start with the black. These do tend to settle, so I'm giving them a good shake to start with. And then, oh, and then they have a dropper. So I could just use the dropper to add in some ink. Oh, that's fun. Oh, I like that. Love the way that this is spreading. Let's put in a few more. Oh yeah, that's good. Right, does it need... Look at that. Look at the way that's moving. I think I might just leave that one as it is, because it's going to spread. And part of this will be seeing how far and, and how much. I've got some little bits here. Let's get rid of those. Right. Okay, let's go for the grey. I just do the same thing again with each of the colours in a different section. And um, probably not the white because um, that isn't really going to show up. But what I might do is I might do the couple, the last ones, and mix different ones, see what the white looks on top of other things. Yeah, that one's spreading quite well too. Let's keep going. I really like the colour of that. 
This is the sepia. It's kind of, it looks almost greeny. Uh, maybe that's not showing up so well on camera, but in real life it's got like a yellowy, greeny tinge to it. And then this one is the Payne's Grey, which I imagine will be more bluey. Yeah. Let's draw some like spirals with this one. That one's not spreading as far. That's really interesting. These ones have all gone whoosh. Whereas this one, it's got like, it looks like, um, like little tendrils coming out of it. Okay, I'm gonna do some mixing. I definitely want to try the white on top of other colors. And I've got another bit on there. Look, this blue is coming through here. I'm wondering if that means that this masking tape, I wonder if it means it's going underneath the tape. I'll only find out when it's all dry and I take it off. I definitely want to try the white on top of some of these areas. Mm, really seem to do very much. Let's try it on the black. And yeah, that's not spread quite as much as this one did here, so it's probably just because this is a little bit drier now. Let's put some more water on this last one. more on there. And yes, the white. I wanted to try the white. And then this last one I'm going to do uh, colour and gold. So yeah, that's the that's the Payne's Grey. This is what it did here. So yes, it's just definitely about how wet the paper was. And this is the gold. Try it a bit on its own. And it does spread out. Let's try a few drops in with other colour like that. So these bits up here are drying now. It, they're still very wet down here, um, but I can see already that this is looking quite matte. And then you've got this kind of soft cloudy effect where the uh, the paint went whoosh and spread all out. Um, it still looks quite shiny in the middle here, um, but I think that's just because it's wet. So I'm going to see when it's dry, whether it all goes matte or whether it stays a little bit shiny. This one here, it looks like this is all the gray. It does look like the colours kind of separated out a little bit, so it's like I've got some darker grey areas and some lighter grey areas. Um, this is the sepia, and yes, it's a, it's kind of retained that kind of greeny hue. Um, um, but I've very got, definitely got very I've got very definite areas where the colour was, and then it's much softer where it's kind of spread out from there. I've got some lovely kind of tendril effects on this one, um, on the, the one with the Payne's Grey on it. This is doing some interesting things. I'm not sure I can see the white happening all very, very much in here, but uh, I'm liking the way that this is all run um, and I'm liking the kind of the blends of the different colours. So yeah, this one here with the gold, I really like the gold on top of the other colour. Um, where it's on its own, not so bothered about it, but if the 
If the colour underneath dries matte and the gold stays shiny, that could be a really interesting effect. So let's give this a few minutes, or maybe an hour or so to dry, and let's see what results we get. Okay, so this is after an hour, and um, so what you can see, or what I can see is that, um, yes, these areas have dried really matte, they're really kind of chalky, powdery, soft finish. Uh, this bit here, where this was really thick, it's, oh, it's maybe still a bit wet. It's been sitting here for at least an hour, if not more, and it's still got like shiny bits on it. So maybe they will mat down over time. But at the minute, I'm just tipping it so you can see just here. Still a little bit of shine. And there was a tiny bit there as well, but that seems to have gone now. Um, this bit here, there is definitely shimmer on that gold over the top of the matte surface, so that's very promising. So I'm going to do some more work into these. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do, but I'm mainly going to be using, I think, a small paintbrush and the dip pen. Um, I do need to do something with this one, uh, because something about the, the colours and the shapes, it's, um, it's not very pretty. Yeah, so I'm going to have a little bit of a play. Uh, what I can say is that the white that I placed on top of these other colours here, it hasn't really done very much at all. You can see tiny little bits, like little flecks of white in there, but not very much. This bit here was just the grey, which is really interesting. It's um, cool grey, and it obviously must be a mix of different pigments because it's got some areas that are really, like, yeah, they, they are very cool grey, quite chalky, and then there seems to be like an like an undertone almost of like a dark warmer grey and you get the kind of like that warmer bit on the edges of these fluffy areas and then in the centre you get this kind of cool grey effect. Right, let's work on this one to start with. What I might do is I might just coat this all in water again. And because it's acrylic ink it shouldn't lift at all. That's the theory anyway. So yeah, so there we go. Um, and then, shall I use the same colour again? Maybe I'll use a different one. Maybe I'll use the grey. Let's paint into that and maybe over the top of some of these brown areas. Add a little bit more softness into the whole thing. Maybe that's a bit better. Maybe if I put a big blob right in the middle, kind of join those two areas up, it disguises the, the kind of underlying shapes a little bit. Let's take this and do a little bit more with that Payne's Grey. And I might just do some really simple mark making. Paint a little collection of lines or petal shapes, kind of create a little wave. And what I'm interested in seeing is whether the ink sits over the top of the, the gold ink. And it's looking like it is. For this one here, what does this one need? What I might do is, this was my experiment with putting the white over the top of the colour, and it didn't really do very much when I kind of dropped it in. You can see tiny little kind of lighter areas, but not a lot really. There's a couple there, but it just looks like I've dropped water in it rather than white. So let's see what the white ink looks like 
when it's applied. And it looks a little bit watery. I'm going to give it another shake. Okay, let's try that. There's a little bit more colour there. Oh, and it's getting paler. Maybe it was just the amount I had on the brush. Well, it's kind of nice and subtle. It does blend in nicely. Let's do some more over here. For this one, I'm going to use the white again and I'm going to try with the dip pen. Let's just try. Oh, that's better. Some little circles on these dark areas. Well, I hope you can tell I've been having fun with this. I really enjoyed adding these little dots and circles with the dip pen and the white ink, and they work really, really well over this very dark Payne's Grey. Um, so yes, I'm really enjoying that. I'm going to clean my pen, just give it a good wipe. And I think I'm going to try with the gold, seeing as I like the white so much. Maybe I'll do some like circles just little marks. I'm not an expert with a dip pen and because I shook up the uh, ink to get the gold particles distributed throughout it all. Um, it's uh, It's got little bubbles in, which means that I'm maybe not picking up as much ink as I could. But basically the this one's got a really fine nib, you get different size nibs. Um, and so you can make really, really small marks with it. Um, let's do like a continuous line. And, but if you press down, you get a wider mark because it's got like two tines that hold together at the nib and then when you press them they they come apart and the ink kind of sits between the two pieces with surface tension So if you're using it for calligraphy, you get like a, a thin mark and a thick mark where you've pressed the, a press, a thick mark where you've pressed the, the pen down. So this is very subtle. Um, you can see it better when the light shifts against it and you get the shininess of the gold against the black. That's very nice. I think I might continue using the gold on this one. Maybe just do some tiny little circles like I did on here. So this is the black. And this is the grey again with the dip pen.
and then this is the one that I put the second layer on and it's still a little bit damp so I thought it would be interesting to see how much of a difference that makes. I mean it's not wet, it's not sopping, it's just still slightly on the cool side when you touch it. And actually I'm getting still quite a quite a defined line. I thought I might get more fuzziness. But I'll tell you what I will do. Is I will drop some water onto these lines and see what happens there. Interesting that the water seems to kind of conform to the shapes of the lines. Like the lines are making a barrier for the water. Don't know what I'm doing now, just messing on with water, spreading this ink out. Let's get some more on there. Okay, I think that's enough. Okay, time to take the tape off. Okay, well that came off nice and cleanly. Didn't tear the paper. And my worries about this running underneath the tape were not proved right. There's a little bit of there, but on the whole, that stood up very nicely to the uh, to the ink, the little bleed I must have had there must have just gone over the top rather than underneath, which is exactly what I should have expected because I painted water right across the whole page. So what do I think? Well, I think I could get a little bit addicted to this painting with acrylic inks. Um, there are some things I really like about them in comparison to watercolours. Um, one is the depth of the colours that you can get really um, it would be really difficult, I think, to get this kind of depth of black or Payne's grey or blue with a watercolour. I really like those. Um, I, these little kind of tendrilly bits. Like, I've never had an effect like that with watercolour. Um, you get something similar to this where it kind of it bleeds out, uh, but I've never had this kind of amazing tendrilly effect. That seems to be something to do with the the amount of water sitting on top of the paper. So just the right amount of water was needed to get that effect. Where I did it over here with the same colour, um, where there was a lot more water, you've got these more concentrated areas of colour and then the kind of yeah, soft clouds around them. Whereas here, you definitely got those like little tentacly bits. So that's very, that's very nice. This grey is really interesting, the way that it's got like a dark halo around each of the, the spots and then the cool grey in the middle where it's all kind of separated out. I think that could be very useful. I don't know if you can see quite so well on here. If I tilt it, I love the way the light catches the gold and especially when you contrast it with the really dark inky colours. Um, because they're so matte and then the gold is so shiny. Uh, I think it really pops. Uh, but I've done very, very tiny marks on here with my little pen. Um, so I don't know how well that's coming across. I really had fun using the dip pen to create really, really tiny detailed effects. Um, that is something that I could really 
totally get into with this and maybe over the top of watercolour instead of using like a fine liner pen something like this I could use the dip pen and the acrylic ink and you could get different coloured effects that way. It's waterproof as well when it's dry but then you can add water into it when it's wet and get different effects as well. Um, so that's, yeah, I think there's a lot I can do with this. So there is my page of, so there is my page of acrylic ink experiments. I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope that you found it useful and I hope that I haven't just enticed you to go off and spend more money on supplies because uh, that's, you know, that's not really what I'm about here. So there is my finished page of experiments with acrylic ink. I've really had fun doing these. I don't, I don't see myself swapping from watercolour to using acrylic inks uh, particularly, but I do like some of the effects that you can get and it's been really fun having play and I can definitely see me using them in limited circumstances. So I really hope you've enjoyed the video. If you liked it then please give it a thumbs up and if you'd like to see more from me do subscribe to the channel. I'm currently working on a whole series of different experiments mostly with watercolour but occasionally trying out some different media like today. So thank you, I look forward to seeing you in another video very soon. Thanks, bye bye!